Use a smartphone or a tablet, like this one. Use a clamp, like this one. Use a tripod, like this one. This is a good example of how hard it is to watch the cast when you don't have a tripod. Even if you're a surgeon and you hold the phone pretty still, it's just distracting. The caster's tiny on the screen. You really can't see the rod at the... When the rod's coming over the top, you totally lose the tip of the rod. So I can't... I, I just can't get... I just, and I can't see the back cast at all. So the caster needs to be much closer to the camera, camera much closer to the caster. You want to use these trees over here as your backdrop. So I would reposition the caster or the camera. Those trees will really highlight the, the line. Even now, I would suggest this fellow's rod doesn't take up enough of the vertical frame. So let's say it's from about there, maybe to there. That's still not enough of the vertical frame, in my opinion. I would say this, when you can see almost the whole cast in the frame, meaning the whole forward cast and the whole back cast, you're too far away. So in a perfect world, film just the forward cast. That way you're really close. You can really read what the body's doing. You can see all the all the rotation or lack of it there and there and there. Um, but if you have to zoom in like this, it's just not... It's not appealing to look at, and it's not as conducive to learning as if you had just been really close to the caster. This is some guy named Steve. You see that he finally learned to double haul. So what I don't like about this is that I filmed this in portrait mode instead of landscape mode. And what happens, you see, is that I get very little window into what his fly leg really looks like. And so always film in landscape mode, never in portrait mode. By the way, uh, this, let's see, this I think is what some people call flare. Who cares? That's a hell of a cast. If you wanna check somebody's tracking error, Film them from straight on and have them throw right over your shoulder. So this is Glenn McCormick, uh, Maxine's dad, throwing um, over the master requirements, so somewhere between 85 and 100 feet, with the right foot forward accuracy style. Don't see much in the way of tracking error there, but this is a great way to gauge that. So the MCI watching this demo figured that went somewhere between 85 and 100. Some buildings can make very good backgrounds, and you see here how much of the cast I've cut off. I've cut off most of the back cast and most of the forward cast, doesn't matter because we can see everything we need to see in both fly legs. So here the rod has taken up the majority of the vertical space in the frame and we have everything we need and we have it at a resolution that is again very conducive to analysis and learning because the camera is so close to the caster. Okay, what's wrong with this video? Number one, I don't have a tripod. There's some shake. Number two, I'm not filming perpendicular to Maxine's casting direction. Um, but what's right about this video? She's taking up a, a big chunk of the frame. So you can really see what she's doing to throw this seven weight rod uh, over 100 feet. By the way, I would just note here that um, She's casting with a front elbow style. Notice that at her back cast stop, her elbow is in front of her in dramatic contrast to the Bruce Richards clip we're gonna see in a moment. 
So something really cool here. All you need is one tree to give you a really impressive ability to see what's going on. You can see it right out at the end there. In the, the point of the loop, you see her big shock dimple. You get a really good read on what the fly leg looks like. And all you need is that one green tree. And if that's all you have, uh, that would be a perfect backdrop. You could only capture, let's say, either the back cast or the forward cast against it, but still pretty cool, huh? Here's Bruce Richards throwing 100 plus, roughly the same distance Maxine just threw. And again, no tripod, but at least this time I'm filming pretty much perpendicular to his stroke. Here we go. I just think it's fascinating to see that at Bruce's back cast stop, throwing roughly the same distance as Maxine, his elbow is way back behind him, his hand's way back behind him, his upper arm is pointing way back there. Interesting. Doink. So these two world-class casters are throwing almost they're throwing roughly the same length of line. Dramatic difference, obviously, at the back cast stop. Look where Bruce is. You see he's looking back. Maxine's not watching, looking back. Look where Bruce's hand is way behind his body. His back is arched in a different way than Maxine's is. And then here they go. And I don't know that these are perfectly in sync. They're not. So one of the things this tells us is when you want to analyze casting styles, number one, get the camera really, really close to the caster. We're not worried about their loops. These are two of the best on the planet. We're looking at what they're doing to make these casts. So the closer the camera is, the better your teaching is gonna be and your analysis, et cetera.